and welcome to The Fan Show. Today we're going to be talking about the Doctor's arch nemesis, childhood friend, possible lover and fancy dress party legend, the master stroke mistress. Masters. That's just very good. <laughs> So the master storyline in Doctor Who, quite complicated. There are some key facts about key facts. the master that you kind of that you just need to know. So he's a Time Lord. Uh, he's known the Doctor since he was young from the Academy on Gallifrey. Uh, he is always known for wanting to take over the universe. And uh, from a production point of view, he was purely created to be a Moriarty to the Doctor's Sherlock Holmes. It's also worth pointing out he's had several faces over the years. We'll be talking about the Roger Delgado master, the Crispy master played by Jeffrey Beavers and Peter Pratt. The 80s master played by Anthony Ainley, the TV movie master played by Eric Roberts, and of course the New Who masters played by Derek Jacobi, John Sim, and the wonderful Michelle Gomez. Let's talk about the first master, Roger Delgado, who is very charming indeed. He's probably the most charming master of all of them. Yeah, isn't he? Suave. He's very suave. He is he's the very suave smooth. Master. And he's quite calm and collected, I think. The first, third Doctor and Master, that relationship, yeah. which Terence Dix, the script editor at the time, is very explicit about the fact he was, him and Barry Letts created him yeah. as a Moriarty to the Doctor Sherlock Holmes. And that is exactly what the third Doctor and, and the Master is. Like, yeah. it's Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty coming up with these brilliant plans, which whilst they're to take over the universe, they're pretty much to impress the Doctor. Like, it all stems from kind of like him being like, look how brilliant I am this week, I am the Magistrar. Next yeah. week, I shall be the Vicar. Like, it, it's like, well, it's the same thing. But like, it, it, yeah, yeah. it's just him in fancy dress every week. It's just so appealing. Yeah, yeah. There are so many missing adventures I would love yeah. to have seen. Like, the master being, this week, I am the butcher, like, in the village, or the, or the mayor next week. And yeah, yeah. like, I love, I love that relationship. And I love, the way that the doctor kind of comes along, sorts it out, and he's like, shakes his yeah. fist, master, and then yeah. next week he's back again. The other thing with the master, with this master specifically, mm. is that he is the, he is the master of seduction. He is the the mm. suave kind of Bond era master. Like yeah. you've got him like seducing yeah. the queen and the time monster. Even even when he talks to Joe, he's kind of ah, oh, Miss Grant. It's kind of it's all very kind of. <laughs> All very seductive and all a bit kind of Sean Connery Bond, I feel. Yes. And, uh, even in Mind of Evil and even when he has that weapon, he, he either has a cigar or, or he, he holds, holds it, it like, like a cigar, cigar which yeah. I just find brilliant. You can imagine him bringing in his Bond girl, his master girl yeah. every week, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. Have, having, oh, this is my wife, you know. Yeah. You can almost <laughs> imagine the master married in, in more than the doctor in a, yeah. in a way. Yeah. So then very sadly, uh, Roger Delgado passed away in 1973 um, without really, without really, filming a, a, a farewell or a goodbye mm. to the master. So the master is kind of left out there in the universe. But the next time we do actually see the master after his uh, appearance in Frontier in Space is uh, in The Deadly Assassin, mm -hmm. which is when uh, the fourth doctor leaves Sarah Jane Smith and has to go uh, to Gallifrey um, for a, an emergency summon. I think the alarm's going off, he's gotta go. And there he finds the master in the, the, <laughs> the, the catacombs of Gallifrey. Uh, looking like he's having quite a bad day. A bit char-grilled. Yeah, a bit, a bit burned, a <laughs> bit burned. Uh, we don't quite know yeah. what happened to him. It's a shame that Peter Pratt is behind a mask and he, like he yeah, does yeah. just sound like this doctor. <laughs> I'm wearing a mask. Like it's all very kind of like, yeah. you okay master? Like it's, yeah. it's quite, quite sad. The thing that changes their relationship with this master yeah. is the desperation for survival. The thing with this one is that this master is very much the puppet master because he can't he can't basically do anything himself if this master was in good form no, no doubt would he be pretending to be mm. the president of Gallifrey and then doctor it is me <laughs> but like he has to get goth to do that work for mm -hmm. him later on we see Jeffrey Beavers play him I, I find I find I prefer mm. that version of the crispy masters we're calling him I, I think Jeffrey Beavers is it really nails that master in kind of the creepiness yeah, and the yeah. delivery and tone of voice a villain at their most desperate is them most evil. But then he finds another body. He finds a new body. A new body at, at last. last. <laughs> it's honestly, it's my favourite, It's well, it's my favourite crispy master scene, but it's it's one of my favourite master scenes. Yeah. 
I think partly because of the special effects. It's the way that he just slides into Tremus's body yeah. and then becomes Anthony Ainley's yeah. master. Which is which is brilliant. It's, I mean brilliant. I am unashamedly And I, it's the way he comes out of the clock as well. Yeah, it's, it's all of that all of that. That whole scene is perfection. <laughs> and then we go on to the eighties and Anthony Ainley's master, who I I quite like. Yeah, I mean I like favorite. all the masters, but I think I just have a, a soft spot for this master because the cheesiness <laughs> it, he's just so rubbish he takes the master's old tradition of wearing disguises and kind of just does it for fun <laughs> he's the portrait even castrovalva for absolutely no reason just at all <laughs> he is Khalid in Time Flight <laughs> for absolutely no reason <laughs> at all. No. And also following the tradition of we had Tree Mass, which coincidentally ended up being an anagram of the master. <laughs> and then you've got uh, this knight in the King's Demons whose surname is Estram, which, <laughs> oh, mm, cunningly what disguises as master. <laughs> like, I just, I, he must sit in his TARDIS being like, yeah. anagram machine. Hmm. Yeah. This one could work as a French surname. Yes, <laughs> to 18th century France. Like, he's, I don't know how he comes up with these plans, yeah. but it is... Is brilliant. I love him for it. So we said things get complicated. Uh, in 1996, the TV movie happens, uh, and at the beginning of that, and I love the TV movie by the way. But at the beginning of that, uh, the master's been exterminated by the Daleks, and apparently his final wish was for the Doctor to take his ashes to Gallifrey. Uh, which I would love to see the scene where the Daleks give the ashes over to the Doctor. I mean, it's all very weird after everything that's happened. Here are your ashes. Oh, okay. Thanks. Sorry for your loss. That's okay. Were you close? Something like that. Okay. Exterminate! Uh, but the Doctor obeys the Master's final wish, which is lovely, uh, and he has them in the TARDIS and he's taking them to Gallifrey. But then, crash bang wallop, the Master crashes out of this thing, and he, now he's a jelly snake. Uh, <laughs> his spirit animal appears to be a python, uh, or his house was the slither was slithering. Yeah. Uh, it, it comes out and he's this snake, and attacks, uh, yeah. set loose on the streets of San Francisco, takes over, takes over uh, this paramedic Bruce's body yeah. and becomes the Eric Roberts master uh, that we know and love. In uh, his massive collar! Uh, and all wish that we could look as fabulous <laughs> as. Uh, the master continu continuing the tradition of looking fantastic. He looks fabulous. And can I just say, he is the most fabulous master we've ever had. <laughs> and I think at this point, it's worth talking about the master's relationship with camp. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, I think it I think it reaches <laughs> It peaks here. It, it peaks, peaks here, yeah. really, doesn't it? it? And we're talking about camp in terms of theatrical, flamboyant, you know, yeah, ostentatious. Which I mean at the same time very evil and brilliant. And yeah. I do think Eric Roberts is terrifying. He is terrifying and he is dark. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Firstly, he mm. walks into someone's house, takes over a guy called Bruce, snaps his wife's neck, yeah. takes the wedding ring. Yeah. Goes away. And then later on Peels in the story... Peels off his fingernails. Yeah, 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 yeah. which is disgusting. <laughs> and then later <laughs> on, kills new companions, Grace yeah. and Tang Lee. I like their dynamic. I think you've got newly regenerated, very gentle, wide-eyed, loves the universe, mm -hmm. positive doctor. And this dark, criminal, yeah. evil yeah. opponent. Arch nemesis. Leather jacket and his shades you know, and his, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's perfect for a movie. It's yeah. perfect. It's actually the perfect dynamic for, a, for a, you know, a big movie. So then there was a time war and the master was resurrected by the Time Lords to fight in the time war and was so terrified he ran away and made himself human. Mm. Uh, who we then meet uh, in Utopia disguised as Professor Yana. Yeah, Derek Jacobi playing mm. the master is... Who is brilliant for a scene that lasts uh, all of the, two minutes. He's the I, shortest you know, master by shortest far. Master. And, yet, and yet, like, one of the best performances. I think because he is almost exactly what you want the master to be. It's yeah. like this sort of quintessential master, I think. He's mm. so evil. He enjoys it so much. Um, and my favourite thing about Derek Jacobi's yeah. master is that 
as similar to the way that John Hurt is uh, in The Day of the Doctor, he's, he's very much kind of a representation of classic Who Doctor. He's a classic Who Doctor. Yeah. Derek Jacoby's master is a classic Who master. He's fantastically evil. Uh, he just, he kind of looks the part. Mm. Uh, he's kind of a, a, just a bit kind of exaggerated. But I wish we could have seen all that yeah. great stuff that you mentioned in The Time War. I, I'm, John Hurt and Derek Jacoby up against each other. That would be My, amazing, actually. Yeah, exactly. That right? would be epic. And then regenerates into a younger yeah. version of the Master, yeah. a bit more on par with the Doctor. And this time round, John Sims' Master is insane. Yeah. He is just bonkers. Because of the way that Rus Russell justifies this the Master being bonkers because yeah. of the because of the drumming. And you feel for him. I think you yeah, feel yeah, for him. Yeah. I think after the revelation that uh, he was initiated at the age of eight to look yeah. into the untempered schism, after yeah. you find that out, you go. Oh, poor thing. Yeah. Oh, it's not his fault, is it? <laughs> oh, oh those, look at him in his nice war look games at him in time. Look his gown. nice robes. Oh, you know, his, yeah. uh, you know, blooming time laws taking yeah. them there. Who do they think they well, are? Well, you do sympathise with the master <laughs> for the first time. John Sim has the the mm. an, an amazing acting ability, it's similar to David Tennant. To, but to have to have an evil character, to have a, a villain. But then you you sympathise yeah. with this character. You you you, you feel for this master for the do. first time ever. I think you do, and I think you really see uh, you see him be emotional. The master goes, "Will it stop the yeah. drumming in my head?" And the doctor's like, "Well, I don't know. I, I can help." And then he's and then he says, "I don't know what I'd be without that noise." And then the doctor goes, "I don't know what I'd be without you." And then the master, on the verge of tears, goes. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, yeah. guys! Just be guys, nice to each other. Just be nice. Uh, yeah. What I do love about John Sim is, again, similar to Delgado, you couldn't imagine him being with another Doctor, I don't think. I don't think I could have seen John no. Sim coming back with Matt Smith. No, like, no way. If no. Matt Smith was ever to have a master, it would probably be this very different. Yeah. It would yeah. either be like your Benedict Cumberbatch, or you kind of someone that could kind of parallel him yeah. in that sort of similar way. But then if you have that parallel, what does that say about Peter's 12th Doctor and Michelle Gomez as Missy? Mm. What's interesting about Michelle Gomez's master is the obvious, it's the thing that's staring us in the face, is the fact that she's female. Yeah. And I think that changes things a lot. My favourite thing about that is that the master, in his continuing adventures of notice me doctor, um, has gone, oh, well how else will he notice me? Oh, well, he likes, he likes all these women these days, doesn't he? <laughs> and he's gone, and now I'm a woman. He's that desperate for the Doctor to notice absolutely, him. Absolutely, absolutely, that he's like, gone, I'm going to be look, a woman. Look at me, I get him me. a present. I'm a lady, And look. it will be perfect, <laughs> and he will love me. It's like this sort of, like, childhood kind of, like, yeah. crush on, like, uh, maybe, like, in the school dinner, I'll, like, give him, like, a bit of my pudding and, like, he'll really like me or something. And, like, she's got, like, I'm going to be a woman and, like, I'll give him a cyber army yeah. and, like, it will be perfect and we will live together forever. Yeah. I, that's exactly, that's what Series 8 is. So true. It's like at Christmas and you get something, you yeah. like... Oh, just... thanks for my thanks. cyber army. <laughs> I'm sure I'll use it before November. Like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a bit... Yeah. I'm sure I won't sell it on eBay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One cyber army available. 99p or nearest bid. Let's face it, the Master's relationship with the Doctor has always been, it's complicated. In all seriousness, she's not going to mess around. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not about fun and games. I think with John Sims' Master, he loved the spectacle. With Missy, she'll just go pop, pop with a little device. Yeah. Pop, yeah. pop, 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 pop. Yeah, dead, 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 dead. She yeah. won't even think about it. And again, and bringing her back scary. into it and just killing off one of like Ruthless. the n new and much loved characters and yeah. the, you know, essentially killing Doctor Who fans by just zapping Osgood. Just, yeah. And it's like, no. Look, she's on my t-shirt. Hey. And then you've got the great big Finnish masters like Alex McQueen as and much like as We'd love to talk about the big Coalition. Finnish masters. Unfortunately, we don't really have time as wonderful as they are. But if you'd like to talk about the Big Finish Masters, definitely stick your thoughts in the comments below. And there is a fantastic article on the TARDIS Wikia page. It's slightly terrifying in length. And make sure you check out an extended version of this discussion on iTunes and SoundCloud. Bye. Bye.